I have a bunch of new makeup releases to test out today, so I thought I would apply them with you, wear them throughout the day, and give you my full thoughts at the end of the day. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Most of these are new makeup releases. There are a few products that are new to me. So let's go ahead and get started and see if any of these products are actually worth the money. Before I apply a new foundation, I'm starting a foundation test today. I'm gonna prep my lips just so that they're ready for the new lip products I'm gonna be applying at the end. I'm using my City Lips Lip Plumping Gloss in San Diego. It doesn't matter what shade, this is just one of my typical lip prep steps to hydrate and plump and smooth out lip lines while I'm doing my makeup. MAC Reformulated Studio Fix Matte Oil Controlling Foundation. And so I am wearing it for the first time today. I never tried the original formula. I don't know why exactly. I think it goes back to my late teens, early 20s when matte complexion products used to break me out pretty badly, but they don't anymore. And I just, I never tried it. I've been NC25 in in MAC face products for a really, really long time. NC25 is described as light beige with golden peach undertone for light skin. But the older I've gotten, I feel like I'm leaning more neutral and a little bit less warm. I mean, you can still see some warmth, but a lot of foundations are reading really yellow on me, including NC25. I don't know if it's because of the red overtones or rosacea. I am in the midst of dealing with some rosacea issues right now, which is why my skin looks a little bit red and splotchy. So I got re matched just to see what the outcome would be. And she said that I am sort of a chameleon. I can get away with NC25 if I wanted to, which makes sense. I'm still NC25 in the powder foundation, but it is reading a little bit warm. I always make it work. I bring bronzer down my neck and what have you. But she said I could get away with N6, which is a true beige with neutral undertone for light to medium skin, or NC16, which is described as light beige with a peachy undertone for light skin. Since NC was a little bit deeper, I decided to go with NC16. This is my first time applying it, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to apply it to this half of my face with a damp sponge, as I usually do, and then I'm going to use a new technique I saw Katie Jane Hughes do on this side of my face. It's not new. Okay, I'm applying it to this side of my face with a damp sponge, as I usually do. It's blending out very easily and it's giving me enough time to work with it and looks very natural and feels completely weightless. It's also blurring my pores and giving a soft demi matte finish. It's not too matte, which is really nice. This is one pump on half of my face. I would say it gives medium coverage and I'll see if I can build it up a little bit. Keep in mind, this is not the full foundation review. I always test foundations multiple days in different ways with different primers. I don't have any primer on today. Okay, it does build on top of itself nicely. I feel a little bit pale, but let's see how things come together. I'm gonna do the other half of my face with a brush. Okay, so I pumped one pump into the palm of my hand. You can pump it onto a palette or the back of your hand too. And this is what Katie Jane Hughes calls priming the brush. You just swirl the foundation into the brush until it's just nice and soaked up in there. And then you apply it to your face. And it's supposed to mesh with your skin so much better and give you a more seamless look. You do get less coverage this way though. But I mean, since I'm trying new makeup, I may as well try a new makeup technique while I'm at it. Okay, so this really gives nice skin-like coverage from a brush and it gets it into your pores. A lot of times when I apply foundations with a brush, I have to go in and smooth it with a sponge after because it just doesn't quite get into my pores. It kind of sits in them or on top of them but this really gets it in there. So I just put a little bit more foundation and I am dabbing some more on top just to add a little bit more coverage where I feel like I need it. Actually, because it covered so well with the sponge on the other side of my face, I decided to just spot conceal only where needed with the sponge and it worked beautifully. Okay, I've let it sit for a bit just to let the shade settle in. I love the finish of this. It's not a flat matte. I was gonna say it's a demi matte, but it's on the verge of being satin before setting at least. I feel like I got really natural, smoothing, medium full coverage from it. I would love to know your thoughts on the shade. How are we looking? I mean, we may not be able to tell until my full makeup is done. I'm wondering if the shade is gonna work in the summer when I get a little bit of color though. I mean, I could always mix in my de-bronzy drops. That's not a problem, but let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Okay, so I have a new product here from Merit. This is the Day 
Day Glow Highlighting Balm. This is made for daytime. This is a very dewy, moisturizing, buildable, blendable sheer highlighter with a sheen, but no sparkle or glitter in the shade Solstice, which is supposed to be universal for anyone to use as either a highlighter or a bronzer luminizing type product. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to use this today. I could have put it under the foundation, but I didn't really want to do that. So this is what it looks like with full pigment on the back of the hand. And when you shear it out, that's what we have. I mean, it's got a really, really pretty finish to it and it feels lightweight. It doesn't feel greasy. I don't really want a dewy bronzer all over my face. Now I know you can swipe the stick all over your face. I don't usually do that though. I usually swipe stick products on the back of my hand like I had a while ago and then stipple them on my face. So you know what? Let's just do this maybe around the perimeter. Okay, it is very, very sheer, which I do like. I mean, how much shine do I want on my forehead? Okay, that gave a very, very sheer bronzy look. If you have dry skin, this might be the product for you. I'm gonna just put this on my cheekbones here and maybe this will just peek through powder. It's not taking my foundation off, which I love. And it is just giving me a slight bronze. This has just enough sheerness to it that I think I can just take the brush right in it. I think this would be really pretty directly over the skin in the summer. You know, because this foundation has kind of a satin finish to it and th that pigmentation is so sheer, I'm not sure if you're really getting this effect. So let's try it over powder. It's been years since I have tried NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And since the texture of my under eye area has improved since the last time I tried it due to to facial devices and just better skincare in general. I mean, who thought I would be saying that at age 48? I thought I would give it another shot. It's been years and years and years in the past. It's been too drying for me. I have it here in shade creme brulee. So we'll see how this fares at the end of the day. You know, I see why people like this if they have less dryness and texture than I do. If my under eyes stayed looking like this, I would really like this concealer. It covers well and it does look creamy and hydrating. My problem has always been that as the day goes on, it starts to look drying and emphasize texture. So we'll see. I am setting it with the new Pat McGrath pink under eye setting powder, which I've already talked about. If you have the white, you're probably fine. There's not that much difference between the two. There is something about the pink that I do like. It's almost like I can't pinpoint it though. I, I think it does offer a little bit of coverage, but I do like them both. And I'm setting my face the way I usually do with my HD Skin Setting Powder from Makeup Forever in the shade Light Vanilla by pressing it into my skin so it really fuses with my foundation and becomes one with my skin. You Using the same damp sponge that I applied my foundation with. Bobbi Brown launched a new long wear cream eyeliner stick to go along with her best selling eyeshadow sticks that are so popular. Now Laura Mercier did the same thing not too long ago. She launched caviar eyeliners to go along with her caviar eyeshadow sticks that are also very popular. Her eyeliners are skinny like a regular eyeliner though. I almost wonder if this is in response to that because I think this is pretty much the same thing formula as her eyeshadow stick because I know product development takes a really long time and for them to launch so closely it seems like that would be impossible but because the packaging is basically the same the only way you can really tell the difference in these products is that the little end cap the colored part is fatter on the eyeliners because there's a sharpener inside and because there's a colored cap oh and the lettering is a slightly different size and it's reversed I've already primed my eyelids I have I haven't set them with powder yet though for a very specific reason. Now, I normally don't line as my first step. I normally do my eyeshadow, but I'm lining first today for a very specific reason, which you'll see when we get to the rest of the eyes. So I just want you to see how these glide on so easily and you still have time to smudge them. These are waterproof, long wearing, easy to work with, just, you know, your typical Bobbi Brown quality. So I'm gonna make a little tick mark in the same direction 
direction that my lower lash line goes just slightly above it to keep that lift. Now you don't have to do this little lift technique like I do, but it ensures that I keep a lift to my eye. And it also ensures that as I'm lining my lash line, I don't go below the corner of my eye because that will create the illusion of a droopy eye and I don't want that. So it gives me a kind of a border, a perimeter. So I'm gonna line my lash line along the outer half of my eye, just kind of scribble it. I'm not being very neat and I'm just building up that line a little bit to create more of a lift. That's optional, you don't have to do that. These do set pretty quickly. So I'm gonna take a small pencil brush and smudge this a little bit because I find as I get older, that just is a little bit more flattering for me than a sharp line. And then I'm going to tight line right at the root of my lashes on the inner half of my eye just to deepen up my lash line a little bit. And although you don't have to do this much, you can see the lift we have here versus this eye. And I'm gonna repeat that over here and come back and we'll put something on our eyelids. You know how excited I get about one and done liquid and cream eyeshadows. And you, if you've been following me or if you're a subscriber, you know how much I love Persona Cosmetics as a brand. So when she launched these liquid eye paints, I was beyond thrilled and couldn't wait to try them. Now I have tried one applying it with my fingers. I think I'm gonna try applying with a finger and a brush, one on each eye today. So we have three shades. We have Oro, a warm amber gold, Pony, a cool metallic baby pink, and Belle, a warm bronze. I'm really feeling this Oro shade today. It reminds me a lot of MAC Amber Lights, if I'm remembering it correctly, which was great for blue eyes. It was really pretty on any eye color. I, I do love the shape of the doe foot. I mean, do I even have any room here on my arm to show you anything? It's a nice size for getting into the corner of your eye. And especially if you have small eyes like I do, it gets right in there. Look at that sheen. I'm anxious to see how this blends out with a brush. Do I wanna go sheer? Do I wanna go pigmented? Okay, after you apply this and you dip your brush into it, it almost seems like it's already dried down. But if you keep blending, it starts to blend into this beautiful, multi-dimensional, ethereal looking shimmer that's not too glittery to be unflattering if you have textured lids. This is the effect I want from so many powdered shadows, but if I blend them too much, I get a lot of fallout and I didn't get fallout with this. It does look dry or crinkly the way a lot of liquid shadows can and it's softly diffused into my crease the way I want it to be. Okay so let's blend it out with a finger on this side and see what kind of effect we get. Still beautiful. I can't tell the difference in how they look. So no matter if you want to use a brush or your finger, you are good. I have two different mascaras here from Swede Beauty. I haven't tried these before. They're both water resistant, but not waterproof. So they're supposed to be easy to remove. I am very anxious to see if either one of these will hold my curl. I did just curl my lashes. Not many mascaras that aren't waterproof will keep my curl. So this one, the fatter tube with the clouds on it is the cloud mascara and this is the pro lash lift mascara so the cloud mascara that I'm going to be applying to this eye is good for length and volume and it says it holds a curl that stays it's supposed to be lightweight and flexible flake free doesn't smudge or clump and here is the wand I need to get these swatches off okay let's go ahead and apply this and then we'll talk about the lash lift mascara Okay, my lashes are still curved, but they're falling already. The reason why they're invisible before I put mascara on is not because they're not curled, it's because they're light. But you should be able to see something happening above my lash line if my curl is held and they've already fallen a little bit. But that doesn't mean it's not a good mascara. If I layer it over a waterproof mascara, it just means... <laughs> It doesn't hold my stubborn lashes curl. So let's go ahead and look at this Lash Lift Mascara that has this funky little wand. It says the skinny wand starts coating your lashes at the roots for a beautiful lift and a lengthening effect. It's lightweight, flexible, and endlessly buildable. And it's supposed to hold a curl that lasts all day. It also has vitamin B5 and it's supposed to be flake free, clump free, and smudge free. This formula is very wet. So I'm scraping some off before I apply apply it. You also have to keep in mind that I am one of the rare few that the Thrive tubing mascara doesn't work well for. So it works kind of like a comb. I like to put some on the back of my lashes because it helps with length and definition. 
This one so far seems to be holding my curl better, but I still see a little bit of droop. I don't like doing this, but I gave my lashes a slight curl with my lash curler after they were dry just to give them somewhat of a lift. So we'll see if it holds up throughout the day. And I applied Barely There lip liner from Swede, and I really like this shade. I feel like this is a shade I don't currently have in my collection. Everything I have is a little bit browner or a little bit pinker. There is a brush on the other end too, and so we do have a success from Swede in this video. And and now I want to apply a new blush that I have from NARS. NARS reformulated their blushes to be talc free. And there's a new shade edition, Orgasm Edge. It's basically orgasm, but without the shimmer, without the sheen. Now I applied this yesterday just to see what the pigmentation was like. And I really, really liked it. I thought it was going to be really strong and I was going to have to spend a lot of time buffing it out, but I didn't at all. So I'm just going to take my blush brush in here and just tap this on the back of my hand so you can see how sheer and buildable this is. You basically can't mess this up, which I love. I love a blush shade that diffuses beautifully and is just incredibly flattering. So I'm wondering if all of the formulations are like this or if it's just specific to this one shade. I mean, how flattering is that? I feel like I'm going to be wearing this all spring and summer. This might be one of my most used blush shades. It's just so pretty. Okay, before I go back into my cheeks with that Merit Day Glow Balm, I have two lip options here. The first is the Clarins lip oil that I absolutely love. There are three new fun, vibrant shades. And Bare Minerals launched their Dewy Lip Gloss Balm in several shades. Now, this is a lip gloss balm that's supposed to nourish your lips and give you all day shine, 24 hour hydration for lips that are visibly healthy smoother and softer. What I want to look at though is what it says about the color because when I started swatching these on the back of my hand, even though they look like they're going to be pretty pigmented, they're actually very sheer. There's nothing wrong with that. I just thought they were going to have a little bit more pigment to them. So it does say that they give sheer color and it says they're supposed to give eight hour continuous shine. There's a very, very faint scent almost unscented, I would say. Very, very faint. The shade I'm holding is Hope, which is described as coral. So here it is right here. This shade here is Dream, described as a baby pink. I don't see baby pink there. That looks pretty much clear to me. And then we have Grateful, which is a nude bronze, and Strengthen, which is described as current. So I want to apply this coral shade, Hope, and we'll just see what we get from it. Okay, I'm getting something, which is nice. It feels good, it glides on easily. It's not sticky and I like it over that lip liner. Okay, all right, I do, I like that. It feels like a hydrating, a comfortable, non-sticky lip gloss balm hybrid. These don't smush down when you apply them, which is nice. Okay, I'm just gonna lightly blot this off and see what a brighter shade looks like. This is Strengthen. Okay, so I feel like they swatch more sheer than they apply. There are more shades than this, by the way. These are just the ones I wanted to focus on. You know what? Let's look at the baby pink one, Dream. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's verging on clear. The shades I didn't swatch are the cooler shades that I know aren't going to be as flattering on me. This is grateful. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some of this on and cross my fingers that it doesn't remove all of this prettiness that I have going on. This is applying beautifully over powder. <gasps> Okay, I like that. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I hope you can. If you are a natural makeup girl and you want just a little bit of a sheen on top of your makeup, this is such a pretty product. There's no 
glimmer or shimmer. It just looks so soft and dewy. And if you have dry skin, I think this is going to be so pretty, especially in the summer. And they do have some lighter shades if you want to use them as a dewy highlighter. I, I kind of wish I had this in one of the lighter shades to use it as an actual dewy highlighter, not for a summery bronze look, actually. Okay, my bangs are always a little bit weird after they've been clipped back, but it is what it is. Okay, so Clarins launched their Lip Comfort Oil, a formula I love in three bold shades for spring and summer, pink, orange, and yellow. So I have the pink on now and I swatched the other two shades so that I could put a little something on Instagram and on TikTok. If you're not following me in both of those places, you definitely should be. This is such a comfortable, hydrating, non-sticky formula. It's one of my favorite lip oil formulas, but I love the three vibrant shades for spring and summer. If you're going kind of bare-faced, it adds a little something without being too much. So I just wanted you to see what they looked like on. But because I already know how these wear and how much I like them, I'm going to put that Swede lip liner along with the Hope shade of the new Bare Minerals Lip Gloss Balm back on. And then I'll check back in with you a little bit later. It's been about seven hours. This is probably the best lighting we're gonna get. It's a little shadowy, but we'll make it work. I forgot to tell you earlier, several brushes that I used during the video were somewhat new. I think I just got busy and forgot to mention that, but they're also on major sale, 40% off through April 30th with my code. So you can save site-wide on Sigma's website. I'll have the link and my code and everything down below. Plus April 18th and 19th, they're giving free worldwide shipping. Shipping, not just US. They have some really great brushes. I've been using their brushes for years and some great makeup too. So it's worth looking around. I mean, you're saving 40%. And of course I have all the other products that I shared today linked down below too. Some are linked through the YouTube shopping icons, but they don't have every product and every brand. So if you're not seeing something, check my description box below the video too. I'm looking a little bit shiny for a matte foundation and it's my fault. I ended up getting on my walking pad as I was doing some work at my standing desk and I got a little sweaty. I don't normally do that on trying new makeup days. I wasn't thinking, but the foundation is still on my face as is the blush and I'll be testing the foundation several more days under various conditions. So stay tuned for my foundation roundup where you'll get the full review. I stand by my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer feelings. It's just too drying. I see more texture than I care to see under my eyes. I knew the eyeliner and eyeshadow were going to hold up beautifully and they have. Now both mascaras have held up nicely even though I did have to curl them again after application. They haven't flaked, they haven't smudged. So I'm going to keep testing them. I'll apply them over waterproof mascaras that will hold my curl and just see what kind of length and volume I can get that way. So I'll report back on the mascaras. After I blotted off that last Clarins lip oil, that sweet lip liner just glided on my lips like a dream. I really love that lip liner. And the Bare Minerals lip lasted a long time. It even lasted through me eating dinner. I mean, I feel like you can still see some pigment from the lip liner and the lip gloss balm. And my lips aren't dry, even though the pigment's gone. So I feel like even though my makeup doesn't look completely perfect, even though there's some shine going on, it was a pretty successful testing new makeup day. Give me your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you intend to grab any of these products? Does anything appeal to you? I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable in some way. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.